Hey everybody, Grumpy Gus here, also known as Karen from Our Fall Acrylics. How are you? I thought I'd uh, do something a little different today and show you how I made uh, cabochon paperweights like this little guy right here. Super easy, super fun, um, and a great way to use your skins. So let me get you down. This will be like three parts, so I'm going to do this over the next couple of hours. But here's part one. I'm come down here. So a lot of you are fortunate enough that you can um, dry skins on uh, parchment paper or on your silicone mats. I painted my kitchen on my kitchen island here. I and mean, you know, we use it for food prep, so I can't leave a silicone mat sitting out, unfortunately. Um, but however you dry your skins, um, you can use those. They do need to be dry. One thing I've been doing is um, I had a couple of failed pours on these ceramic tiles that I use for trivet boxes. That's where this one came from. You can see the back so messy. That I soaked, um, and then once it bubbles up, I just take an X-Acto knife. So you will need a couple things. You're gonna need a skin. You're gonna need a cabochon. Go online. Um, look for ones that are at least four inches for a mini paperweight. Of course, you can use smaller ones to make jewelry, um, but for cabochons, you, you need it to be a decent size um, so that you can, you know, see your image and use it as a mini paperweight. Um, so I just take it, cut it out, and then leave this dry. I have one here in a bowl. Let me put this to the side. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting, getting off track. Things you'll need, an X-Acto knife, E6000, Mod Podge or GAC 100, either one. Um, something to put your, on the back, this is a uh, peelable um, little faux velvet or felt paper that I get off of Amazon in a pack and I use these to line my box or put under my box for a soft landing. Um, so they work well on the back of these, you know, so you can do that. Um, what else will you need? I have a cutting mat, that's optional. Um, and that's that's about it, that's all you're gonna need. And if you want to get something off a tile, I am so, I have just soaked this one, it is wet. And I scored it before I stuck it upside down in a bowl of hot water. And usually I'll let it sit for a couple of hours. This has been in here only about 10 minutes. And I'm peeling this one off of this tile because I had forgotten to add my GAC 800 to my house paint. So it cracked all to hell, like really badly. So I can't use it as a trivet. So I went ahead and took my X-Acto knife and scored it kind of like this. And I should be able to peel, if not whole because of the cracks. The other one I could peel off completely intact. This one, because of the cracks, I'll be lucky if I get a piece that's usable. But basically I do that, and then I, oops, scored some more. Come on. And then gently peel up like this. And keep scoring, and you can use your X-Acto knife to give it a little nudge right through here and then roll it back. Let me score this some more or cut it. My blade might be getting dull. And I'm just gonna get a piece of this off here. Oh, it's gonna come intact, are you? Are you, are you? Look at you, coming off completely whole. Cracks and all, see now I see little tears in it because of the cracks. But I'm not gonna worry about those. And then later, you know, you can reuse your tile here. Come on off, all the way. It'll just peel right off like this. And then you just roll this back with your fingers and clean it off. But I'll do that off camera to save this tile. So I now have this. I'm gonna let this sit and dry. I only have one cabochon left. It was in my, uh, I have like a junk drawer. It's an old secretary um, 
that I use for all my craft supplies and I found two of them in there and I don't even remember where I bought them but I'm sure if you google it or if I find a good site I'll put the link up where you can um, order these but basically I have really nice like this part right here would make a gorgeous because it's going to really um, highlight um, the little areas where the blooms are so I could probably get at least three cabochons out of this piece like look at that right there but oh, there's a crack there let me move it over a little just super super pretty right I don't know if that's gonna show up but I'm not gonna use this one because it's wet we're gonna put that on a um, on my parchment paper over there and let it dry you want to make sure you put it on something that's not going to stick to. So I'm going to take this dry one I have that I dried out last night. Um, oh that also, I don't know why I, I didn't like it. I just didn't like it on the tile. So I peeled it off. It's nice and dry. And I'm going to pick an area where I like and find a nice little design. I could just do all the lacing or I could take this little part. Let me get closer right here with that little tiny bloom in it, which is what I think I want, and have like a little baby bloom in my cabochon like that. And once I have my area, ooh, that's really pretty. Actually, I'm gonna go for this. It looks like a little field of pink buttercups, even though buttercups are yellow. Little pink flowers right there. And I'm just gonna take my blade, and actually I have several I have exacto knives everywhere. Like, a I, I, day goes by where I'm not using an exacto knife for something. So they're always on hand. So I'm gonna take a sharper exacto knife and I just do it right around the cabochon like this. And I'm gonna cut that out. And try to do a good job. And you're wanting to do this on a mat or if you don't have a mat like this, a cutting mat, do it on a piece of cardboard or something so you don't scratch your your countertop or anything. And make sure I get that all cut out. Let's give it a test. Nope, not pressing hard enough. This one might be might take you a couple scores because um, the paint, depending on how much paint you poured, it could be rather thick. So you see it coming off there, there. Hold this down. Nope, oh, don't want it to rip. Let me score it some more. And I'm sure there's part, you know, all kinds of videos out there, craft videos on how to make the jewelry and the pendants and everything. I just thought this was a uh, fun little way to make a, a uh, use your skins. So there's cut out, perfectly fits my cabochon, and there's my little circle, which is now also wanting to stick to this so there it is looks adorable I put it on like this that looks great and if you have some little edges or anything stick sticking over don't worry about it you can always um, go back over with your exacto um, knife and cut those out um, if you're really careful you could probably get like you know two or three out of your skins um, I might do this one just because it's wet and not use it because um, I do love the brighter colors of this one. Really, really pretty. Little gold, maybe like that. That one looks really great. Just a fun little design over here. It has some, some flowers running through it right on the edge of that crack. I'm gonna go ahead and score this one. I do need to leave it dry a bit before I um, adhere it to my cabochon so but we'll go ahead and cut it out and then I'll have it the one thing you have to be careful about when doing this with the skins is that they stretch you know because obviously you can do this to a photo or any sort of drawing or whatever um, and make a cabochon it doesn't have to be skins you can do it to anything really but the, um, the skins from the paint are very pliable and stretchy. And so you have to watch out. Oh, this part's really thick right there where it cracked. 
So I probably had too much paint on my canvas as well. But you can see it's stretching as I'm trying to cut it. Let's use my finger and hold that down. Plus I'm a lefty, so the right getting to the right side is always tricky for me. All right, did that do the trick? Well, most of it, oh, there we go. Get a spot right here. Really dig it in there. And one little spot over here. And like I said, I could probably get two more out of this. Now, there's still some really pretty areas and I'll just avoid this cracked area. But definitely one here, maybe three more, easy. One, and release two more, two more. But here's the, um, another one I could do. Hopefully that shows up, all the bling. Like that, but now we're gonna take, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish off this guy here. And what I'm gonna do now is take this and I'm gonna put, you're gonna need a small brush too. Um, I'm gonna put some Mod Podge and paint the top of this just to seal it. And I'm probably gonna do the front and then the back. So I'll just show you how I do the front. My brush is just out of, oh no, there, there's my brush. And I'm just gonna use uh, another thing you'll need that I forgot to mention, a little foam brush like this. I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna paint over this. You really don't have to worry about the lines so much. You don't want deep lines showing, but the real faint ones, they will disappear as this dries. So we're gonna let that dry like that. I'm gonna see how dry my other one is. Pretty dry, like I said, I didn't really soak it. These, this guy was really, full of water, um, the paint was, because I let it soak uh, for several hours. This only soaked for about 10 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one as well. And that's it, I'll be back in about a half an hour or so, once these are dry, for part two. See you hey. everybody, I'm back. Let me get this down a little bit. There we go. Um, I went ahead and cut out a couple more circles just so I could see which one I liked best to do. They're nice and dry. They're very glossy from the Mod Podge. Um, you can go ahead if you want, it's optional, and put a, a coat of Mod Podge on the flip side. If you were doing a photograph uh, or a print from from anything really it could be from the cereal box literally you'd probably want to do both sides so the ink doesn't leak through i really don't have that concern here since this is you know dried paint um now the fun part is uh you're you're going to adhere it to this we're going to use our e6000 i'm just seeing which one i like better i put a fresh blade in my um Thing. That one's like very reedy. That's kind of pretty. I don't know. I'm worried that this isn't going to show up on camera. Here's that guy. It's nice. Peel him off. Here's my original one with the pale pinks. Like that. It's kind of okay ish. I, th I think I like these bright reds and pinks better. They just seem to really show up. So I'm going to go. And this one has like the. Uh, the lines running through it, which makes makes it really look like petals, like that. That's kind of nice. But I think I like this first one. But I'm a little worried. See how I had this one I cut out of my um, trivet, and there's some minor cracks there. So I want to make sure that they don't show up too much underneath my cabochon here. But not really, because they're so far. The one thing that's nice is. These are rather forgiving on the edges, the things don't show up. Um, you're really only capturing probably 80% of the dimension of your circle, and the rest of it kind of gets blended um, on the edges. So I think I'm gonna go with that one. I like how it looks like flower reeds, very pretty. Um, I'm gonna throw up, I'm telling you again, halfway through the video, you'll see a list at the beginning of the video of all the things you do need. 
So I'm gonna use some E6000 glue, which dries clear, super strong, super tough, great stuff. Um, and you're gonna want some sort of catalyst or a wedge. This is one that came with my, my uh, jar of Mod Podge. Just something where you can gently um, move the glue to the edges as we go along. If you don't have a catalyst or a wedge or something of that nature, a credit card, an old credit card, dig out that Blockbuster card from 1985 and use that. <laughs> so I am just gonna go ahead and make sure this is all nice and clean and dry. And I'm going to put not a lot of y'all, just like, I'm gonna show you how much glue, because it'll spread. There, it's not even a dime, not even a dime size. It's like a good, and it's clear, so I don't know if it's gonna show up. A pea size amount of the E6000. And then you're gonna line this up. You can put it down, I like to hold it in my hand. And line up your cabochon. And again, you can trim ends and everything later, and hopefully this shows up. You can see inside the glue spreading. And I'm gonna flip this over. I wanna make sure this is all nice and lined up. And move things over, just press gently. And then I'm gonna take my little wedge here and gently, because like I said, the um, this is skins, so they stretch. So if you do too hard, you're gonna stretch it out. And you don't want that. Basically, all you wanna do is move that glue to the edges. Oops, and if you do it too hard, you're gonna slide, like I just did right there, you're gonna slide your um, your little circle right off the edge. So let's do this and go all the way around. Oh, nice. Make sure this is all nice and centered. And if I'm off just a little bit, you're not gonna be able to see. See where I'm off just a tiny bit? I am not going to sweat that because I can trim that later. Um, and, and if I'm short on this side, again, you do have a little bit of a cushion because there's like a little lip around the um, cabochon where you don't see your image. So this is looking fantastic. Down it goes and we're gonna leave it dry. I'm, I'm just gonna keep talking though. So I went ahead and used did the same thing with my X-Acto knife, and I put my cabochon on top of uh, my faux felt um, sticky pad. You stick it there, and I just went, you know, and cut it out to size. Once this is dry, I will go ahead, I can do it now. I mean, I do need to leave it dry, but like with this part here that I that where I missed, I just take my X-Acto knife to it, Oh, you don't want it to stick to your uh, surface. There it goes, get off my finger. This, like this, I see another spot I missed. You can go and just trim that up, easy peasy. Like that, flick it away, off. And there's my cabochon. Gorgeous, right? And then to put on the back, normally I would wait till it's dry, but in the interest of the video, I see one more spot I missed. It's the lefty thing, I swear. I bet you these were all parts on the right-hand side when I cut this out initially. Yeah, there we go. Oh, for Pete's sakes. One little minuscule piece, come off. There we go, we can take this, and I'll probably have to do the same thing here. These, now you can glue this on if you want. I found that these are pretty dang sticky so I'm not gonna worry about gluing it on. I could use my E6000 if I never ever wanted to remove this little piece of felt that I can't open. <laughs> That's how sticky it is, y'all. <laughs> I can't get it open. There it goes. So just take this, and yeah, here's the tricky part, and line it up on an edge, and then I kinda just roll it on. You can see where I missed, like right there, I'm still missing a piece of the, um, let me just trim that guy off or put it down. 
and get him off. And there he goes. And one little stubborn piece. <clears throat> Making me look like an amateur. And then just give that a press. Let the whole thing dry. And voila, that's it. Let me hold it up so you can see it. Turn it around in the light. It's super cute, super fun. Great way to use your skins. Optional to clean it because in case you put too much let me put the cap on this, of the uh, E6000 glue and say it squirts out on the side and gets on your cabochon. Um, what I do, and I know this is a precious commodity right now, I have um, isopropyl alcohol, 99%, because I use this to wipe off things when I do resin work. But I would just take a little bit of alcohol on a paper towel and give all this a nice rub down to uh, make sure, get off my fingerprints, get off any residual glue, any residual Mod Podge, all that stuff, wipe it all down, all around the edges. And a voila, ta-da! That's it, y'all. Um, I hope you enjoyed something fun, something different. I'm bored, so. <laughs> Gonna do stuff like this. Uh, but yeah, great way to, um, you know, I'm not a jewelry person. I don't have the patience for it. I barely have the patience for this. And I have enough left for two more that I'll save and maybe I'll um, find a site and order two more cabochons. Great little gifts, good gifts um, for teachers. You know, if kids actually went to schools, um, you know, I would give that to my daughter to give to her favorite teacher for sure. Stuff like that, so anyway. Uh, <laughs> I hope you like this for something different. Um, I'm going to get back to painting and conquer those bleepity bleep, uh, cloud floors. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.